is this? The ultimate golf ball for mid and high handicap golfers. Let's go find out. I feel like these look like what would happen if you'd have left like me during A-level art to decorate a golf ball. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm all here for it. And like a bit stereotypically, I'm obsessed with the pink one. Anyway, these are Speed Soft Ink from TaylorMade. It's a brand new golf ball. It does come in Speed Soft as well. So if you're a little bit more conservative and you want something plain, don't worry. You can still get this technology in a white and a yellow plain golf ball. But, I mean, why would you not go for this ink option? It's super cool. Now, as you may have guessed from the name, the whole thing behind this golf ball is the soft feel, but not giving up that speed. Typically when we talk about a soft golf ball, that's a ball with a lower compression point. It's something that feels really good, but doesn't necessarily travel very far. Now there's a few bits of tech in this, which TaylorMade have used to try and balance that out and give you that really nice soft feel, but still give you that balance of distance. Now, there's a few reasons why someone might want a low compression golf ball. If you don't swing it as fast, it's going to go further. And also the structure of this can help in certain instances. So this is a two piece Ionema golf ball, which means the outside cover of this is a lot firmer than what we'd see in say a TP5 that has a urethane cover. So the structure is very different here. We have the inside, the soft inner piece, and then the firm outer piece. And generally, if you go from soft in the middle to firm on the outside, that means lower spin. Now, that's not always a bad thing. For lots of golfers, lower spin will keep the ball on line more. So it's gonna mean you're gonna lose less shots off to the left and right. And also it's gonna give you more run out. So if you're someone that wants that more total distance, this could really help. There's also a lot of instances where if people don't really generate loads of spin around the greens, there's not much point paying for a more expensive ball because you're not gonna create the right spin anymore. Now, in this golf ball, we've got a different dimple pattern that's gonna reduce drag and help you get that extra distance to balance out the fact that we've got that soft feel. So let's hit a few and see how it performs. We're gonna test this with driver, seven iron, and around the greens and see just what the performance is like. Now, generally I use a TP5, so I know what my distances are for that. I know kind of what my window is, what it spins like. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that differs. If you're interested specifically in this ink pattern, there's four colors blue, pink, red, and green. I'm gonna try really hard not to lose the pink ones here because I'm a bit obsessed with them. And I've only got three. <laughs> right, let's start with driver. Trackman setup. I'd be interested to see what my carry distance is with this and if it changes at all. I'll tell you what, that flies high. I actually really like it. I think most golfers would suit a ball that helps you get more height on it because a lot of golfers don't necessarily have the speed or the loft to get the kind of correct trajectory which would give them the most carry distance. So a lot of times, people can be sometimes scared of height, but getting a bit more height is gonna give you more carry distance. So my clubhead speed on that was 95.7, which I'd say is pretty average for me with driver. The ball speed was 137.8 which is pretty good to be honest. My fastest generally at that speed will be like 141 maybe. So it's very much in the kind of the right ballpark. Carry at 224, I would typically expect between like 220 and like 238. And the totals got up to 242. So actually I've got a little bit more run out there than I say sometimes would. Um, and actually I think that's pretty good for most golfers. They need a little bit of extra run out, especially on those longer courses. What's interesting is the height's got up to 99.4 feet which to be honest is somewhere I liked. I really like that fly at like 100 feet and actually for my club head speed and ball speed, that's probably where it should be. So it's definitely helping me out a little bit in the height category, which I like. I've been pulling it a bit too low recently. Interestingly, the spin was up at 3000, which probably not what I would have expected from this ball, given it's generally expected to be lower spin. There could be some element that maybe I'm slightly faster than what they might have aimed at for this also could be strike location. Let's double check that. I think it may be spun a bit more because I had the face slightly open. That launch is so high, I love it. I really think if you're someone who wants to hit the ball higher, this would do a really good job. I guess that was the whole idea with the change of the dimple pattern. What's weird as well is I probably expect a really big difference in feel between this and the TP5. And I don't know if it's because a lot of face technology, the softness of the center, but it just doesn't feel massively different to me, which I think is a plus point. So I squared that up better. Clubhead speed came down a little bit, but actually my spin dropped 2,300, which is definitely where I want it to be. Carry 232, total 252, all very nice numbers. Definitely an increase in height. I'm def that's definitely from the golf ball because that's got over to 106.5 feet, which is way higher than what I'd normally do.
That's pretty consistent. It's just going through the same flight window. I like it. Those two balls were literally on top of each other. It can only be a good thing for your goal. Oh. Okay, I pulled that, which happens. Not a robot. Actually, the spin didn't drop as low as I think. Sometimes I can get real like low spin on that like, bad, fast left shot. And it dropped down to 1700, which really isn't that bad at all. And the carry was still 233, high up at 82. Definitely giving me a little bit of help there. Ball speed up to 141. Performing a lot better than expected for me so far. Let's go see how it performs in the short stuff. Okay, 7 iron. I think it's going to be interesting to see how much the spin gets up on those approach shots and how well we can control the ball into the greens, especially here where Alcanada Golf Course and the greens are pretty firm, especially for the time of year. So getting some control of them is pretty important. Definitely still flying high. Actually, I can see that stopped pretty quick on the green, which wasn't necessarily what I was expecting was going to happen. Spins at 5,800, which to be honest is probably what I'd see if I'd like maybe moved up a model to like a chunkier iron. So it's not a massive drop. I think mine would only be in like the mid 6,000s currently. Didn't strike that my best, so the distance isn't up there, but... Struck that really nice, that'll be interesting. It kind of one hop and then checks. It definitely bounces a little bit more on the green than TP5, but still like the spin there's got up to 6,400 and it's carried 152. No, my clubhead speed was 80, my ball speed was 110. The height's nearly up to 90 feet. Overall, they're just pretty solid numbers to be honest. I can literally see that spinning on the green. 6,000 spin, 145 carry. Overall, it's pretty impressive data. These balls are literally 25 quid for a box. It really does like make you question what more it is you need out of your golf ball. This all feels like it's just going a bit too well. So we need to do some pitching, chipping, kind of interrogate this golf ball a little bit more. I've left myself an absolutely filthy shot here. 30 yards, front pin, bunker shot. Green drops off long, firm green, tight grass. It's all going for me, really. This is seriously going to test out this golf ball and me. Let's see how we get on. Go. I mean, it stopped quickly. That's because I pitched it in the upslope. And somehow, by pure miracle, it's not rolled back down this. That spun 3,800. And I feel like I struck that pretty decent. So I guess this is where we're starting to see the spin dropped down quite significantly. So actually there's been a quite big difference between the full swing shots we saw, which spun pretty near to what I'd expect, and these shorter shots. And a lot of that comes down to the construction of the ball, but also how you generate spin in the different shots. So say with a driver or a seven iron, where the club is a lot flatter, you're getting a lot of your spin from your speed hitting the ball. Now what, in this circumstance where we're hitting a lot shorter shots, obviously we don't have that speed. So what we're actually using is the grooves, but also the softer cover of the face to kind of stick into those grooves and create that spin. Obviously this cover is firmer than what we see in say a TP5, so that's why we would see the spin drop off in this circumstance. I feel like I'm trying to add height to the shots to balance out the fact there's less spin which is why I'm coming up short a bit, which is quite interesting. I guess there are ways to get around controlling your ball without having like loads of spin. I mean, this ball is by no means uncontrollable because these are pretty fast greens, pretty hard, and that's kind of pitching and running out maybe five yards. So there's still a bit of control there. It's still gripping and trying to stop. That's when I put 4,000, which is definitely a little bit better. And often I think, people can sometimes get caught up with spin because how many 25 handicappers would realistically stand here, open the face upon a 60 and spin it next to the pin, even if they had a TP5? It's just not the shot you've seen played a lot, apart from by like tall pros and really low handicappers. So I think as much as it's amazing for a golf ball to be able to do that, you've got to kind of match up what your skills are to the golf ball because if every time you chip, you play chip and run with a nine iron, does it actually really matter? <laughs> if the ball spins more around the greens on these short shots. I think what's interesting here is there's obviously that big bit of soft in the name. And personally, I'd say at this point, it doesn't feel quite as soft as a TP5 to me. It almost feels like I can feel the outside firmer cover. 
maybe it's just because I'm near the green, I'm not compressing the ball, I'm not getting to that softer core. I guess I maybe expected it to feel a little bit softer around the greens than I think it does. Hi, how are you? Very good, how are I you? I follow you on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 of course, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just here doing a few videos. There's a natural reminder that if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, hit that subscribe button. Because over 75% of people who are watching these videos aren't subscribed. You might think it makes no difference at all, but it does make a lot of difference in terms of helping us fund our content. So hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Let's go hit some more short game shots. Right, it's going to be interesting to see what this is like on the green, especially given the fast, and I can be heavy handed sometimes. That's interesting. They feel really soft off the purface. <laughs> I just thought that was going to be a lot quicker than it was. Quite they're all out of that. I can't actually believe how soft this feels off the putter face compared to how it felt on the chip shots. Like, it feels so soft here. I actually quite like the feel of that as well. Pretty consistent distance when you actually hit it hard enough to get it there. I don't think you would pick a ball based on its performance on putting, but what I do think is if it doesn't feel right on the putting green, it could put you off, and there's definitely not an element of that at all here. Overall, this is a pretty damn good golf ball, and it's really interesting because typically if I went into a pro shop, I wouldn't really consider a ball at this price point. It's only £25 for a dozen, which is seriously cheap compared to some of the models, and it's still delivering loads of the performance that you get in other golf balls. Now, yes, it's not equal to a TP5, but for the price, you wouldn't expect it to be. But I think in terms of looking for a golf ball, you need to match it to what you want from your game, what what areas you need to look for. Do you need to hit it far higher? Do you need more distance? Do you need more run out? Or do you need like that more control and spin around the greens? This is not a TP5, but it delivers really good performance and it's gonna really suit that mid to high handicap range. Also, that Ionima cover, it's gonna be more durable. So it's gonna survive more time bouncing around in the trees. You know who you are. This golf ball is gonna suit loads of golfers. And I just love the way it looks too.